Oh, Darren, you just told us that you also used to be homeless before. And um, how long ago was that? About 27 years ago now. And how long were you homeless for? About eight years. Eight years. And uh, how did you become homeless? Uh, through um, drinking, basically. But how did that lead you to losing your your way wherever you were living? Because no one could trust me. Okay. And did you not have family that? I could have help family, you? but you know, uh, my family. I didn't want to put it on them. I'm sort of brought up old old school value. If you got a problem, you sort it out yourself. Mm. Um, me, I, I I I come from Ilford. Yeah. So for me, I, 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 I hooked up with people like I was, who drunk and used, Asian, black, whoever it was, and I ended up begging in a place called Bodger's Undercut for a number of years. And then one day I was seeing a counsellor over that period of time, blaming circumstances for why I was drinking, because that's what I believed in my mind, it is a mental illness. Um, and I had a moment of clarity, I called it, where uh, I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. I went to go and see that counsellor and threw my mercy on him and uh, I needed to be uh, taken away from society and I ended up going into a detox over in West Ferry okay. where um, I would call it I had a spiritual awakening you see I always had a fear of the future of not drinking or the past of the bad stuff that I actually done was dogging me mentally and uh, I said it to myself would it be so bad to look for the rest of my life in sober eyes and as you guys know I swear quite a lot um, and this little voice said give it a go now at that time I was waiting to get transferred over to where I live at the moment in Walthamstow to a place called Ravenswood I don't know if it's still open and I went in there for treatment um, they introduced me to an organisation which I won't mention um, because uh, it deals with people like me um, and I started attending now and uh, They've got a program that you do to recover from the hopeless body state of mind when it comes to alcoholism, um, which a man helped me with over at Hainal. Hmm. Um, I haven't needed or wanted to take a drink for 17 years since then. Um, I still closely work, work with other, as you can see, yeah. uh, people like myself for uh, free. Uh, and just to stop you, um, how old were you when you became homeless? I was about 23 when I became homeless. And describe to us your first day when you became homeless. I don't know mate, I was drunk. Okay. You see, the reality, any reality, of, when the reality kicked in, my mind would turn into alcohol. Mm. So I assumed my life was over. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And uh, were, when you became homeless, did other homeless people help you out in any way? How were they? Were they friendly towards you or hostile? They were friendly, some of them. And mm. they all had hidden motives. For example? Well, you know, they'd want me to go buy them a drink and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? They, they, there was no kind gesture. Mm. You know what I mean? Because you're always looking out for yourself. Mm. And how was your life before you became homeless? I used to work. Um, I, my, my partner had a, a boy. Uh, you know what I mean? I had a roof over my head and, and you know, I ain't blaming alcohol because I understand that that was my attitude towards life. And did that affect, so when you became homeless, how did that affect your relationship with your partner? Well, I didn't see her no more. As I just explained to you, I was all brought up in a way that if you've got a problem, you sort it out yourself. Mm. And if you ask for outside help, it's a sign of weakness. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's another mental game, isn't it? And uh, where were you working before? I was working over in Hainault Industrial Estate, you know, I had various jobs, plastic company, working for the council over in Hainault F Country Forest Park. And how long did you say you were homeless for? About 10 years. And uh, what would you say, Darren, was the toughest part about being homeless? The toughest part about being homeless, for me, and it still goes on today, is, you know, you're trying to go to sleep or you're trying to get your head down and you get people walk up to you and start spitting and abusing you when they're drunk. Mm. They, they think that you're uh, uh, their punch bag, you know, and, and the way society treats people that are actually homeless, they don't ask to be there, you know. That was the hardest part. You, you feel so isolated from the world. Mm. Even though the world is around you. Still. Even though the world's people around past you, you. And people are just look, walking past you, looking down at you. And for me, deep down inside, you wish you was fucking dead. Mentally. 
you know, but you're too scared to take your own life. Yeah, that's interesting, because I was going to ask you, what stops people from killing themselves? Some people, they're lucky enough that they wake up and reach out. Mm. Some people, in my experience, die. Mm. You know, this is life. Um, I can't answer that question. I can't answer that question, to be honest. Okay, and um, what was the nicest thing someone done for you while you were homeless for 10 years? Well, a lot of people done a lot of nice things, but recalling it, can't really, you know what I mean? I can remember one day I was absolutely on my ass, and I didn't eat for about three to four days, and I was sitting at Bodger's undercut. I had a couple of beers, because that come first. <laughs> But he actually, you know, he was a man of his word. He said, I'll go get you some money off the cash point cell. And he actually come back with a tenner. And said, go and get yourself something so he don't buy no drink. And I, I, I started to my word on that. Mm. You know what I mean? And uh, what was the meanest thing someone done to you? Give me a hiding. Okay. Spat on me. Abused me. For no reason. For no reason. Okay. And uh, what, what, what do you think got you through the tough times? Alcohol. Because I was always obliviated, you know. When you're when you're drinking, you bounce. It's a well-known mm. fact, isn't it? You don't feel nothing till the next day. Mm. So when you went from being homeless to not being homeless, how was the transition? Was it? Well, as I said to you, I was brought back in society via a detox centre and a rehab. Mm. So I was looked after by, say, members of the public, for instance. You know what I mean? Or people in the care place and so. I felt confident in myself that I could do these certain simple jobs mm. without taking a drink. Mm. You know what I mean? Because I used alcohol for everything. And uh, finally, what message would you have for the people watching this video? What would you like them to know about homeless people that you feel maybe they don't know? Homeless people don't get treated the way that normal society does, you know? The only difference between me and a homeless person is a piece of paper in my pocket and the clothes on my back and a roof over my head. But them homeless people were feeling an emotion just like I do, you know what I mean? And if you're going through that state of mind, you know, society to me is very sick at the moment. When I grew up, it was about helping your fellow man. You know what I mean? Communities mixed together, there was no racism. You know, there was none of that. And I, I tried to keep that old school value. You know, if you see a man <laughs> drowning, you pick him up, not put him down more. Mm. It saddens me that society turned out like that. You know, you see where I'm coming. I'm yeah. not going to start crying at a minute. Because yeah. I've been now. It's like people lack feelings and emotions now, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, you're all shut down. Well, how do you think that happened? Where, where people are so, like, people, rocks now? I, I will put it on media. How? Just the way it's all going on, we're all, we're all being brainwashed. Do you know what I mean? We, that's why they call them programming. Mm. Society, I said it to my mate, I must have went asleep mentally when people become so selfish. Mm. You know, it's very sad. I mean, when I was drinking, God, God bless, I used to visit a place and it was a, a mosque in Elford. Mm. And they used to show me love. Mm. They used to go in there, get curry beans, mm. come out, bring the table out, and treat you like you was a king, mm. even though you was homeless. You see, I don't see that no more. Mm. We're all human beings. And for people like uh, us here and other organisations that are trying to help the homeless and get their voices heard, what would you like to say to them and what advice would you like to give to them? I would like to say to the people that are actually dealing with um, alcohol and drug addicts, um, as far as I'm concerned, there's only two organisations that can actually help them people, and then people are actually the people that actually run the drinking drugs themselves, mm. not getting their stuff out of a book or didn't go through education. As they say, unless you've walked in a man's shoes, you haven't got no experience in that man's shoes. Mm. So please leave them alone and deal with the people that ain't like me, chronic alcoholic, hopeless type, and deal with the heavy drinkers that have got the issues. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. What can I say? All I can say is please show people love and compassion. You know what I mean? No matter how hard it might be for you, 
you, show, you, you give out love, you don't always receive it back, but it's about you giving out that love to someone. That's my message to you. Thank you so much.